Hey everyone, hope you're doing well out there. So I'd recently taken a break writing and recording music for an upcoming project and found myself looking again at ways to streamline my workflow. Somewhere along the way, I sort of began to mentally organize third-party effect plugins I'd impulse purchased a while back and kind of got caught up on one in particular, a certain lo-fi plugin. I really started to ponder just what sort of throughput a plugin like that would look like. I mean, at its core, I knew it was basically a mixture of EQ, saturation, and compression. But I already had those individual components built into FL Studio. Couldn't I just fuse those effects together to basically replicate the sound I was getting out of a paid plugin, only free? Could I actually build an interactive lo-fi effect plugin? My first obstacle was figuring out where in FL Studio I could even begin to make this happen. I can't tell you how many times I'd scroll through my FL Studio effects and instruments plugin list and run past a certain unassuming plugin, one which I hadn't given much interest or thought. The plugin I'm referring to is Patcher. Now, I had a basic understanding of what it was. Add this plugin, connect the signal output to the next plugin, so on and so forth, blah, 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 mixing effects and instruments, okay, whatever. It just hadn't appealed to me. Not when I can just simply stack effects into mixer slots and instruments in the channel rack. One nice big linear layer cake. Mm. Of course, the simple layered approach wasn't going to give me the robust options and logical throughput I'd need to cobble up an interactive plugin. Coming up, I want to show you how I created a simple lo-fi plugin using FL Studio Patcher. Let's jump in. Let's begin by opening our plugin picker, grabbing a new instance of Patcher, and dropping it into a desired mixer track slot. Let's set this up on master slot one. With Patcher now open, let's expand the window a bit to give us more room to work in. Double click the nested control surface plugin. In here, let's right click knob and select a style that suits your taste. Now let's expand the knob and rename it. I'm going with Lo-Fi Master, as this knob will define the overall effect going forward, ranging from 0% to 100%. For added functionality, let's mimic these steps and add a new button that will serve as our bypass option. Note that a button can be named and captioned independently. To exit surface editor mode, click the wrench icon at the top left. Right-click the knob and select Activate. Do the same for the bypass button. Doing so will allow for MIDI CC controller options if you choose to affect the surface knob and button with an external MIDI controller. Clicking back over to the patcher map, I can see now I have two new parameter output dots to the right of the control surface plugin. Hovering over any of these will display their active parameter name in the FL Studio hint panel. The same applies to inputs as well. We now have a working interface capable of affecting our upcoming audio plugin chain. Let's continue by conditionally routing our wet and dry audio signals. Right-click inside the patcher map, show plugin picker, type controller. Doing so will highlight fruity envelope controller. Select and drop it into the patcher map. This instance of fruity envelope controller will serve as our bypass on-off logic. Let's rename it accordingly. Now let's enable this instance's parameter input. Right-click inputs, parameters, Global Modulation X. I'll explain why in a sec. Opening up our envelope controller, let's ensure we have Articulator 1 highlighted. Click on Presets, Smart Controls, Smart X for two controls, inverted. What we have now are two potential outputs that can serve as the inverse of one another. Stick with me on this as we will be creating four more instances of envelope controller during this build for varying value manipulation. Let's set Articulator 1's base to unipolar, represented by X, and set the base dial to 100%. Now set Continuous Output from the Options dropdown. Apply the same on Articulator 2. Let's assign these two articulators as parameter outputs. Right-click the Envelope Controller instance, choosing Outputs, Controllers, Articulators 1 and 2. Their parameter output nodes will appear. Next, let's link our control surface bypass output to our envelope controller parameter input. Now if we click the bypass button, we should see our envelope controller cursor and X value jump left and right as the button is toggled on and off. We're now ready to bring an audio signal into the mix. Let's do so by adding an instance of fruity balance into patcher. 
Create a second Fruity Balance instance by right-clicking the first, click Save Preset As, Hold, and Release into the Patcher Map. Let's label one Wet, the other Dry. Let's create a link from FL Studio to the main inputs of both Wet and Dry. From Dry, connect its main output to FL Studio. Now we need to allow the wet and dry instances the ability to accept parameter changes from the preceding envelope controller we set up. Inside both wet and dry, right click the volume dial and click activate. Notice the two new input parameter nodes. Connect the new wet input node to envelope controller output 1 and dry to output 2. For greater ease, you can also auto-link to linkable nodes by right-clicking a node and selecting a desired destination. With our current configuration, what we have so far is a plain and basic mute button. We can test this by playing audio over the master and toggling this bypass button on and off. Graceful stars Because we currently have our wet and dry input parameter values coming in as a range from 0 to 100%, we're technically boosting the signal gain. Let's limit this by going back to Envelope Controller. With Articulator 1 selected, right-click the peak point and select Type and Value. Set it to 0.8. This is the dial value necessary to pass signal at 0 dB, where no increase to volume is made. Articulator 1's functional range is now set from 0% up to 80%. Perform these same steps with Articulator 2, setting the left peak point to 0.8. With these ranges in place, the audio signals will no longer be unnecessarily boosted. Of course, I promised you more than a glorified mute button, so let's move on to the next module in our plugin chain, EQ. Let's continue by dropping in an instance of Parametric EQ2 and linking its output input to WET. Link Parametric EQ2 main output to FL Studio. We're going to be modifying a number of values within Parametric EQ2. Right-click and select Inputs, Parameters, and work your way through enabling 1 through 14. So to fast forward a bit, essentially what we're looking to do here is a gradual level in frequency shift that will form into a bell filter as our lo-fi master knob is turned up. I'll use predetermined values for this example, but feel free to alter any of these to suit your creative needs, and experiment as you see fit. Because we have a flat 7-band EQ running through our wet signal chain, there should be no effect to our audio at the moment if we were to toggle the bypass button. Let's move on to the next steps where we dial in our lo-fi effect. For the EQ portion, let's go ahead and add two new instances of Fruity Envelope Controller. The first we'll use to manipulate the EQ band's individual levels. The second we'll use to shift their frequencies. Go ahead and add a Global Modulation X input to both using the steps we use when creating our bypass. Connect both inputs to the knob output node on the Surface plugin. This will allow the master knob to control the parameter value range within both envelope controllers. We'll continue by labeling the first as EQDB and the second as Frequency. Right-click and enable Articulators 1 and 2 for both. Now let's crack open EQDB to make our value range conditions. As we've done previously, let's set 1 and 2 to Continuous Output, Unipolar Mode, and Base Level 100%. For Articulator 1, click the Articulator Part dropdown and select Modulation X Mapping. Right-click the left point and set to 50%. Set point 0.2 to 0%. Grab the center tension point and give it a slight curve. Replicating the previous steps, go ahead and set Articulator 2 with point 0.1 as 50% and point 0.2 as 65%. We'll give this one a swift ramp by dragging the tension point as high as it'll go. Let's close this and head over to Frequencies. Using what we learned previously, let's assign Articulator 1's range between 17 and 50%, and Articulator 2's range between 50% and 100%. Now that we have our parameter conditions defined, we can now link our new articulators to our EQ plugin. Let's right-click Articulator 1's node connected to the right of EQDB. Under Fruity Parametric EQ2, connect to input nodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 7. Replicating these steps for Articulator 2, 
connect only to input node 5. From our frequencies instance, connect articulator 1 to fruity parametric EQ2 input node 8. Articulator 2 to input nodes 11 and 13. If everything is set correctly, we should now be able to form a cone filter inside EQ2 simply by turning our control surface knob left to right. If you're not getting a response, or if anything is behaving erratically, go into your envelope controllers and ensure continuous input is enabled by your articulators. Verify all connections. If you now have a working EQ cone shaper, congrats! The bulk of our effort is now behind us. Let's now add a bit of grit to our signal chain by adding fruity fast distortion off to the right of EQ2. Disconnect the main out stemming from EQ2 and instead connect it to the main input in fruity fast distortion. We'll leave the remainder of the wet signal audio chain disconnected for now. Right click the distortion plugin and add a mix level parameter input. Now let's define the parameter range by once again adding an instance of fruity envelope controller. I'll rename this one Distortion. Only Articulator 1 is needed here. Let's set its range from 0 to 10% since we're only going to need a small bit of saturation. Go ahead and link its output up to the main surface knob and its Articulator 1 output to the Fast Distortion Mix Level parameter input. We're now in the home stretch. Let's add an instance of Fruity Compressor and link our audio signal from our Distortion plugin through the compressor and ending at 2FL Studio. We'll add one input parameter to define the gain knob. Feel free to set your other compressor settings to your liking. Now let's add one final Fruity Envelope Controller instance to control the range of our compressor's gain value. I'll simply name this one Compressor. Just like the ones above it, link its output up with the main control surface knob. Let's contain its range between 50 and 60%. This will inject some needed signal gain to make up for perceived decibel loss due to the EQ high and low pass filters as the lo-fi effect is increased. Now let's take a breath of relief and finish things off by connecting Articulator 1 to our Fruity Compressor gain parameter input. With any luck, we should now have a fully working interactive lo-fi effect plugin at our disposal.